one day bhagwan baba was giving a discourse in sai kulon dal and said i will give you one mantra today and with this mantra you are all going to become realized souls one shot do you want me to give so the whole hall said yes swami give us that mantra are you serious about that mantra yes swami if i give you really you will do it yes swami then immediately he said simple neeru manishini neeru manishini neeru manishini neeru manishini this is the mantra he said offering my most prayerful salutations at bhagwan's lotus feet i will try my best to convey to all of you some of my experiences with bhagwan baba the wonderful lessons which i learned by being blessed with uh, the best proximity possible probably to some of the chosen ones by himself in the year 1979 i happened to enter the holy precincts of prashant nilayam as a stranger as a stranger means a stranger without knowing bhagwan baba without knowing anything about prashant nilayam or puttaparthi i was desperately seeking a job there was some advertisement in the newspaper at that time and i applied hoping to get a job and eke out my livelihood through this job if at all i was going to be blessed as i applied i didn't even expect that i would ever be called for interview also when i was called for interview to be faced at whitefield during 1979 summer course time i was very reluctant to go because it was an expensive affair for me to travel all the way from west godavari district all the way to bangalore and my father was not in a position to afford so much of expenditure and another fascinating aspect that happened at that time was that in the year 79 in the month of february as i was working in loyola college and my job was about to get over by march 31st my father one day called me and said your marriage is fixed that hit me like a bombshell and marriages were conducted like that in those days parents decided and just intimated to you and we were fortunate to have the greatest culture to be abiding by the decision of our parents before going to bhagwan baba and surrendering myself at his lotus feet if at all there was a god and a goddess for me it was only my father and mother none else when my father said something that was it that's all just do it maybe it was because of the tremendous influence that the great epic ramayana made on me from my very childhood i was fascinated by the three wonderful epics the whole world reveres and respects unfortunately we don't do it in our own country i am not saying this bhagwan baba on a number of occasions through his discourses in sai kulwant hall in sai ramesh hall in the university auditorium mentioned it to all our students and also devotees that slowly the wonderful epics that actually put you on the real track of life are losing sanctity and it is necessary for us to revive and it will be no news to you that bhagwan baba himself rendered ramakatha rasavahini he drafted his own story once again and gave to all of us with new insights and new interpretations even scholars were shocked when bhagwan baba presented ramakatha rasavahini to the world 
I would very much say that all the parents must put in all kinds of efforts every day to talk to their children on Ramayana, Bharata and Bhagavata without fail at least for an hour. At least for an hour. As we narrate these wonderful stories to our children, probably we also get to know the wonderful insights of Ramayana because Ramayana, Bharata and Bhagavata teach us the very essence of life, the very purpose of life, the very higher goal of life that has got to be accomplished. Living like a, a normal monitor is not living at all. There is a purpose to life. There is a wonderful poem which, in Telugu which says, If you are just on this planet, like millions and millions of termites, which appear and wither away without making any impact, do you consider it as living at all? Being blessed with the most fascinating life as a human being, is it not actually the most important responsibility of each and every human being to find out the real purpose of life, pursue it and accomplish it? We will have to ask questions ourselves all the time because Bhagavan Baba himself hundreds of times told us in our personal interactions Bangaru Nenu Migu Chapagalanu Matramu Cheval Sindhi Matramu Mire. It means I can only preach, I can go on talking, I can go on directing, I can go on telling, I can go on instructing you all. But you will have to do it yourself. When you are hungry, do you think <coughs> if the food is served in your plate and you are standing in front of it, you are sitting in front of the meal plate, your hunger is not going to be satiated until and unless you eat it. You have to do it. Are we doing it? So Bhagavan Baba said, instead of asking questions which are not to be asked, Go on asking questions yourselves which are pertinent and relevant. Whenever elders tell you, do this, you say, why? Why should I do it? Go there and speak to such and such person on this important thing. Why should I go? I tell you, pursue this kind of study. Why? Why should I study that? It has come to such a stage today that when they ask you to wear a dress, you ask them, why should I wear this dress? I don't want. I will do whatever I want. Bhagavan Baba said, as long as you go on asking such type of questions, believe me or not, there is no good future to you. This is God's injunction. This is God's command. He said, stop asking such questions and ask yourself one thing. You are always, always asking, why, 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 why you are asking? Stop it and stop learning. Why not? Why not? Why not I do this? Stop asking why. When your father said you do that, don't ask him why. Uh, why not I do it? Whatever my father said, why not I do it? Whatever my mother said, why not I do it? Whatever my elders said, why I don't do it? Why don't I respect my parents? Why don't I respect my grandparents? Bhagavan Baba one day was narrating the greatness of the culture of this country. Unrivaled culture in the entire world. No country no country can ever boast of this culture, believe me or not. The whole world is working with vengeance against you to destroy your culture and civilization. 
all human values are totally destroyed it is for the reconstruction of the culture and the civilization of this great country that this avatar took so much of strain i say it strain because ever since i went there in 1979 till bhagwan left his mortal coil i have never 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 seen him taking rest even for a minute he was working and working and working sweating and sweating and sweating profusely straining his throat straining his voice straining his energies everything all for our welfare for our betterment for our prosperity because if you prosper in life if you accomplish spiritual heights if you become a good human being the benefit is yours not bhagwan babas if you sing a bhajan don't think that you are pleasing swami maybe he is kind enough that he gets pleased by it but the real benefit accrues to you because you are singing you are sitting in the bhajan hall looking at him and enjoying the blissful sight and the benefit is yours whatever you do in this world in the name of spirituality you are doing everything for your benefit because jantu naam narajan madurlabham it is impossible to be born on this planet as a human being this is the dictum of the vedas and we know it and we are very fortunate that we are born as human beings it is not a joke bhagwan baba himself said that and in any number of discourses when bhagwan baba said jantu naam narajan madurlabham the translator tried to say and translated it as it is really impossible to get actually a human life bhagwan baba used to correct and say it is not simply impossible after millions and millions and millions of births you get into human life in a private conversation one day he was talking to other teachers in the interview room and who looked at us and said the same thing about human birth and then somebody asked him <coughs> how is it swami that it is so great so difficult such a wonderful blessing that it is out of your immense mercy that somebody gets a human life swami said i don't want to waste lot of time on talking about it and giving a discourse here because there is a short time there are many things to be talked about and enlighten you all but one example probably suffices to tell you how fortunate you are you go back home while walking on the road or living in your room open the window look onto the road you will find lots and lots of pigs donkeys buffaloes cows what not you find so many creatures you find ask yourself a question why you are not one like that why why what is the difference between those and you that's also life this is also life 84 lakhs jeevarasulu bhoomi meda unte 83 lakhs 99999 jeevarasuluki ee avakasham labhinchaledu swami said 84 lakhs of species strong on the planet 83 lakhs 99999 species do not belong to this kind of a blessing we are unique we are special and swami also said what is so special about it he said you are endowed with the wonderful quality to discriminate to think what is good what is bad what is right what is wrong how i should behave what i should do what i should not do you know as a human being you are taught and swami was a bit pained when he interacted and said today you are doing all things which you are not expected to do and you are not doing that which you are supposed to do 
let us contemplate on that because with my own personal experience of living in the ashram for the past 40 years and never liking to cross the boundaries of the ashram and come out even onto the roads in Puttaparthi I understand how great it is to lead a wonderful spiritual life in ashram 24 hours one addresses the other as Sai Ram Sai Ram Sai Ram Sai Ram this was started by Bhagavan Baba whenever you see somebody you don't address him by his name Sai Ram Sai Ram Sai Ram Sai Ram for good as well as for correcting somebody is doing something in the ashram which he was not supposed to do so you go there and say Sai Ram Sai Ram Sai Ram don't do that that's what it means he won't say don't do that he'll say Sai Ram stop it lovingly you get corrected Bhagavan Baba started this preached it and told everybody that the reason why I said Bhagavan Baba always try to establish once again the wonderful culture and civilization of this country through the apex we got such wonderful messages and through Ramayana you know what Sri Ramachandra Prabhu did Swami always felt extraordinarily happy when he talked about Ramayana when he talked about Bhagavatam when he talked about Bharatam these are wonderful epics which we need to contemplate on all the time Sri Ramachandra in his life he loved only one thing he practiced only one thing he digested only one message from the Vedas that is called Dharma righteousness that's all he understood Dharma digested Dharma followed Dharma loved Dharma practiced Dharma to such an extent Ramo Vigrahavan Dharma you are supposed to do in this world only things which are Dharmic is it Dharma or not Swami always taught us before doing anything ask yourself a question whether it is right or wrong it is dharma or not how much of dharma with how much commitment with how much of love towards other beings dharma was practiced wonderful it was his father called him and said you are going to be coronated tomorrow no jubilation on his face he said oh is that so that's the only thing oh is that so are you coronating me okay father next day morning he was called and said you are not getting coronated you have to go to the forest for 14 years oh is that so I am going you want me to go now no trace of sorrow on his face no trace of sorrow what message are we learning from Ramayana then what message? Do we really love our fathers so much? Our mothers? Kausalya called him and said Because your father did this I don't want to be here with him Please take me also away to the forest And Sri Ramachandra told Kausalya Mata Amma It is not dharma I will not do it Very simple Lakshmana Swami wanted to go with him to forest And he said I don't mind taking but I have to follow dharma you need permission from your mother and from your wife go seek permission Swami one day specifically spoke talked about Lakshman Swami's mother Sumitra 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 the name itself is so wonderful a fantastic friend a friend the true meaning of the word friend you need to know you consider so many as your friends actually those who take you to films those who take you to beaches those who make you spend a lot of money make you buy expensive dresses roam on the roads Swami said all these are not your friends they are in fact your enemies they are all your enemies they are dragging you onto the wrong track 
do you have one friend who is <coughs> pulling you <coughs> to the temple is there any friend who says come on let us go to the temple today is there any friend who says let us go and sit in bhajan let us sing bhajan deeply lost in the thought of god is there any friend who says let us do some charity today is there any friend who wants you to undertake meditation for at least 5 minutes a day no what kind of friendship you are supposed to do swami any number of times said bhaja sadhu samagamam bhaja sadhu samagamam be in the company of good people who try to put you on the spiritual track and then tyaja durjana sangatyam tyaja durjana sangat leave the company of bad people who come to you on talk bad all the time keep on complaining about others looking into the drawbacks of others go on criticizing others what are you doing actually you know one thing according to dharma paradushana maha papa if you are criticizing somebody that's called maha papa you know why it's called maha papa whenever you criticize you need to speak as i just now told you speaking is the gift given to only human beings on this planet and speaking which can also be understood as a talking this is described by lord krishna in bhagavad gita as vachaka tapas it's called vachaka tapas matladuta talking is called penance you know why yogis why sanyasis why realized souls don't talk they don't want to commit sin that the reason why they don't talk we don't stop talking unfortunately from morning till evening we are talking and talking and talking you don't know what is talking actually talking is a very 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 pious act at the same time if you don't talk fine it is with the serious dangerous consequences you have to control your tongue and talking is of two kinds one is external talking when you are talking to others and the second is called internal talking you are talking to yourself actually 24 hours it is very dangerous that is the reason why bhagwan baba in prashant nilayam he made all his devotees sit in silence silence sit down in silence practice silence he wouldn't come out bhagwan baba was in the interview room always and all the devotees sitting on the sands in the veranda in the mandir everywhere they close their eyes they don't talk first time in 79 when i went to prashant nilayam i was pushed into that silence i was damn scared and frightened by that silence i said what kind of silence is this because i went from the outside world into a spiritual world where i was used to talking only from morning till evening today unless i am asked to speak i don't love to speak maintain silence don't talk don't talk to yourself also internal talking also has got to be stopped because any kind of talking is sin how do you talk actually in ramayana there was one thing described by valmiki maharshi when he talked about sri ramachandra and i did not find any difference between sri ramachandra and sai ramachandra because i found the same description in swami how was rama with reference to speaking <coughs> valmiki maharshi said murdu bhashi mita bhashi hita bhashi puro bhashi murdu bhashi mita bhashi hita bhashi puro bhashi puro bhashi what kind of talking murdu bhashi whenever he spoke people were mesmerized and wanted him to speak and speak and speak lost track of time listening 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 to just like bhagwan baba murdu bhashi 
Mitabhashi. Mitabhashi is always a person of few words. Bhagavan Baba, when you people looked at him, probably some of them thought in the beginning, maybe he was a dumb. They never found him speaking at all. Yogis are always like that. Yogi is one who doesn't speak until and unless it is absolutely necessary to speak. But at the same time, when it was time to speak and he opens his mouth and begins to speak, it's not called speaking, it is described as a lion roaring, transforming millions and millions of people and putting them on the spiritual track. Into the divine world they get transported. A lion roaring when he opens his mouth and speaks. But at the same time, Bhagavan Baba always said, My life is my message. Meaning, you also don't talk until and unless it is absolutely necessary. And when you speak, whether think for a minute your speaking is going to make any impact on anybody else at all. Is it going to touch somebody's heart and bring some transformation in him? Otherwise, don't speak. Hitabhashi, always he spoke of the good of others. Always good, good, good. Somebody is criticizing you. It was happening with Swami. There were some people who were criticizing Bhagavan Baba, publishing in newspapers on the front page in bold letters for days and days and days. And when the administration approached him and said, <coughs> Swami, this is too much. Now, a rebuttal is required. And Bhagavan Baba looked at him and said, What kind of rebuttal? What do you want to say? Swami, we will put forth all the facts to them and we will ask them to stop this kind of criticism and this kind of uh, a writing in the newspapers and publishing on the front, front page and all that. And Bhagavan Baba said, Okay, you write a rebuttal. He will criticize that. Then again you write a rebuttal. He will again write something again. I How long will you continue this? There was no answer from the administration. And Bhagavan Baba himself said something wonderful, fascinating, excellent, superb. So fantastic. We will all be shocked actually when we listen to it. Swami said, you know what I do generally speaking or what I was doing throughout all my incarnations ever. What was it, Swami? I have a simple method of silencing people. What is that? I won't talk. That's it. Let them criticize. I will not open my mouth. That fellow will break his head against the wall and he will have to stop writing. I will not speak even a single word about it. Probably I understood it as killing people through silence. Just maintain silence and finish them off. We do it at home. I was talking to my students this morning. There are many students here <coughs> who were with me at Parthi. When a kid takes away some 10 rupee note or 20 rupee note from his father's pocket without the knowledge of the father, fearing father wouldn't give, father finds out that 20 rupees were missing from his pocket in the night and he would certainly suspect his son. This fellow must have done that. And he would go and tell mother, I think this fellow stole 20 rupees from my pocket. What are you going to do? If you are like Sri Ramachandra, I will not talk to him from next day morning. Just don't talk. And he would come and hello dad, how are you? No answer, go away. For a few days when you don't talk to him, it is as good as the fellow was totally finished. He would come stand in front of you and say, Father, do anything to me, but don't stop talking to me. I can't live. Moral punishment. Bhagavan Baba used to do this. Very frequently. A person whom he always loved 
wanted to put on the spiritual track he goes on talking and talking and talking for 6 months one year one fine morning drops him like a hot potato he wouldn't even look at him for 6 months 7 months then that fellow will go on and on and on crying 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 finally swami would come and say yeah you know what happened when i was talking penance was not that intense but it got intensified by a million times when i stopped talking to you because you will think of swami 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 you don't even feel like eating breakfast swami what happened swami 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 penance has got to be like that intense penance intense 24 hours you think of only swami battering yourself making yourself into a wonderful human being because bhagavan baba said meer andaru na drushtilo aakara manavule kaani aachara manavulu kaadu swami a number of times said you are all human beings in form but not in spirit ask yourself one day bhagavan baba was giving a discourse in sai kulon dal and said i will give you one mantra today and with this mantra you are all going to become realized in souls one shot do you want me to give who would say no so the whole hall said yes swami give us that mantra i want to become a realized soul immediately right now are you serious about that mantra yes swami if i give you really you will do it yes swami uh i have my own doubts you may not do it swami don't delay it please give it fast we want it i want right now swami so you put your ears and focus and say swami you are delaying it unnecessarily come on i, have, I don't want to be delayed even by a minute or a second give the mantra swami swami actually went on talking like that <coughs> for a few minutes when i said i am giving the mantra are you ready yes swami we are all ready really ready yeah, yes swami we are ready please and then he said i am giving it give it swami please don't delay it and then swami said this is not like namo narayanaya om namah shivaya sai ishwaraya vidmahe satya devaya dhime tanna sarva prachodayat om bhur bhushon tat sarvadra renyam bhargo devasya dhime dhiyana pari not like that this is a unique mantra please give it swami then immediately he said simple నేను మనిషిని నేను మనిషిని నేను మనిషిని నేను మనిషిని దిస్ ఇస్ ద మంత్ర ఐ సెట్ దట్ మీన్స్ ఐ మే హ్యూమన్ బీయింగ్ ఐ మే హ్యూమన్ బీయింగ్ ఐ మే హ్యూమన్ బీయింగ్ ఐ మే హ్యూమన్ బీయింగ్ దట్ దట్స్ ఆల్ దిస్ ఇస్ ద మంత్ర వాట్ కైండ్ ఆఫ్ మంత్ర స్వామి దిస్ ఇస్ దెన్ హీ గేవ్ ఎక్స్ప్లెనేషన్ టు దట్ మీనింగ్ అండ్ సెట్ యూ నీడ్ టు రిమైండ్ యువర్ సెల్ఫ్ దట్ యు ఆర్ ఏ హ్యూమన్ బీయింగ్ బికాస్ అన్ఫార్చునేట్లీ యు ఆర్ బిలో హ్యూమన్ లెవెల్ రైట్ నా from that level you have to travel to human level bangaro before you cross human level and get on to the divine track and even this nenu manushini nenu manushini nenu manushini only 50% mantra is it what about the rest of the 50% swami he said nenu pasuvunu kaanu pasuvunu kaanu pasuvunu kaanu pasuvunu kaanu you have to tell yourself i am not an animal i am not an animal i am not an animal why swami said animal thoughts are dominating your minds all the time 24 hours your mind is completely poisoned you love to criticize people you love to go to places which are not to be gone you want to talk things which are not to be talked about are you talking about spirituality any time from morning till evening swami one day i don't know whether it was uh, because of uh, the pain he felt in the deeper portals of his heart he said bangaro meeru devudu mundu nunchuni podduna okka nimisham namaskaram cheyyar he said you don't stand in front of god's picture for one minute and you don't do a prayer like this one minute one minute 24 hours of time i am giving you every day ask yourself bangaru you are a witness to yourself do you do it do you get up in the morning first of all what time do you get up get up at 9 o'clock get up at 8 o'clock go to bed at 12 o'clock 1 o'clock is it right in puttaparthi ashram the day begins at 4 o'clock 
and all the lights are to be off by 9 o'clock. If you don't put off, somebody will come and knock on your door and say, Sir, it is 9 o'clock. If you go and try to enter ashram after 9 o'clock, it is marked. Somebody entered. There was a time, believe me or not, when in ashram somebody wanted to go out of ashram for a few days, he was to take Bhagavan Baba's personal permission to go. You have to sit in the front row for darshan, get up and tell him, Swami, I want to go and see my parents. And Bhagavan Baba would look at you and say, not now, goes away. You are not going. Spiritual seekers with great commitment, with a de determination, with a strong mind entered ashram. Ashram life is no joke. Entering ashram is not easy. To be living in ashram is not at all easy. It is necessary for us to know or have some knowledge about ashram culture first of all. One day I was in my room, in my next room there was some devotee staying for quite a long time and I was sitting in the veranda and reading something. Somebody, a stranger passed by my side and knocked on the next door and that devotee living in the next room opened the door halfway, just only half the door. He opened, he looked at him, he talked to him for two, three minutes and the man left. When this person came out and he was going for darshan, I casually asked him, Sir, who was that? Who came, he knocked on your door and you spoke to him and he went away. I was shocked when I, I heard the answer given by him. He said, that was my son. He came from Chennai to spend some time with me. Then he, why, why did he go away, sir? I said. Ashram rule is, I am not supposed to entertain my son in my room. So I told him, go to accommodation office. They will give you accommodation in the shed. And they will charge one rupee per day. Stay there. And then whenever you want to go away, before going, if you think it is fit, you come. Say bye to me and go. Otherwise also it's okay. You cannot. As we are educated, we know in ancient Indian times when the children of the kings, the rulers of empires, when they wanted their children to be educated, they were to be sent to ashram. They have to go and stay with the guru. Guru doesn't come to the palace and teach. No. You go and stay there on one condition also. Parents, maybe they are kings. They are never allowed to go to ashram and see their children until and unless they had permission from the Guru again. And Guru would not give permission at all. So you will not come. If you read Mahabharata, you will be shocked to know when Dhritarashtra was asked to send his children to be educated under Dronacharya, Dronacharya was asked by Dhritarashtra in the open court I want you to stay here and teach my children. And Dronacharya said, find out some other Guru, Sai Ram. It will not happen. Dharma, what are we doing? When Swami was in physical body in the earlier years, when holidays were declared and children were to go home, Swami definitely called all the children and teachers to the bhajan hall and addressed and talked. And he felt very sad when all the children were going for holidays. He would say, Tomorrow you are all taking a train or probably some of your flights going back home. You are all happy? Yes, Swami, we are happy. I am sad. Why, Swami, why are you sad? You know why? Because I am rearing a wonderful garden of roses here in Prashantanilayam called a university. In this university, all my children are like roses. I protect all these roses with a tremendous care. I water all these plants morning and evening. I don't even allow those to be exposed to the sunshine 
might wither away i take great care i love my roses so much tomorrow as you go home you will not listen to your parents you will be on the roads or maybe your parents will feel sad that you did not watch your tv for nearly 6 months so they will put you in front of tv and your mother would mix food and bring it and say while watching tv eat food my son along with the food she will poison you because according to bhagwan baba television is called a television we are getting addicted to televisions we are addicting to gadgets today i was uh, coming and my boy is uh, booked a ticket for me on the flight i was amazed shocked and my heart was bleeding as i was seeing all the fellow passengers including passengers of 70 years men and women children everybody everybody was with a gadget there was an announcement saying that you put off your gadgets nobody no one did it everybody was cell phone was on everybody's ipad was on everybody was watching downloaded films what all they were doing god alone knows in our university today i don't know how many of you are aware we don't allow anybody to carry a cell phone whoever he is any student from class 1 to phd nobody is allowed to use a cell phone as long as he is on the campus in all the campuses if we find any student at any point of time with a cell phone believe me or not the fellow is given tc that minute that that minute whichever be the time you are just going to complete your mtech course final semester from tomorrow you have exams in another 15 days you are going to get your mtech degree i don't care you are terminated sir in 15 days my course will be over no it is an unpardonable crime on your part to carry a cell phone there is a ridge college or a ridge university in united states of america i was reading in the newspapers on the other day 12 year to 18 year old children all of them what all they were doing using cell phones and the university appointed a committee to find out what is all happening i can't describe what's happening actually my culture forbids me from talking about it we belong to a different kind of culture being given to us by bhagwan baba which is the best in the world i have no doubt about it and i would love to live like a human being a perfect good human being i don't want to degenerate into the animal level i should know what i am doing one point which was raised by bhagwan baba was think for yourselves bangaro if you are having a gadget how much time you are spending on that how many messages you get how many messages you send useful useless what all you read totally unwanted trash so much of junk gets poured into your machine go on and on and on and on and what are you doing reading and replying in the process ultimately what is happening according to bhagwan baba it is time it is a time bangaro how much you are spending on that why swami time ho oh, why swami time kalaya namaha kala kalaya namaha kala atitaya namaha kala swarupaya namaha kala aham kala ha i am time bangaro god is time every minute it is time are you sanctifying your every minute of time by taking the name of god or are you just dumping time in the dustbin and wasting away all kala ha bhagwan krishna described on the battlefield to arjuna i am kala i am whether we like it or not our time is running out swami always said you think you think you are only 40 
spirituality to be undertaken at the age of 60 bangaru there is a lot of time even before you open your eyes you are 60 there is still time you are thinking you are 60 next minute you are not there because you don't know when you are going to die jatasya hi maranam dhruvam any thing that is born in this world is sure to die was the translation given by the translator and bhagwan baba said it is wrong translation in a public discourse when bhagwan baba said jatasya hi maranam dhruvam the translator said once you are born you are sure to die he said it is wrong it is wrong stop this translation swami swami once you are born you are you are sure to die that is wrong no what is that you are born means you are dead he said you are born means you are dead the minute you are born every minute you are walking towards death and you never know when it is going to come to you what did you do all these years you spent so much of time 30 years you spent 40 how many times you went to temple how many times you participated in bhajans how many times you said sai ram govinda narayana did you say when will you say why don't you do it because ajnana i say my prayer every day asato ma sadgamaya from asat kindly lead me to sat i live in asat only i am not taking you one step towards sat asato ma sadgam why do you pray tamaso ma jyotir gamaya from darkness kindly lead me to light from darkness deeper darkness you are going where are you moving towards enlightenment where is that daya karuna prema satya dharma shanti prema ahimsa concern for others where is it dried up completely it doesn't exist bhagwan baba was not like that it's karuna love walking on two feet all the time loving everybody and caring and having concern for everybody when some student is sick in the hostel he would call doctors and say hey some student is there go there take care of him give him this prasadam when some calamity happened at somebody's place in his village bhagwan baba would call warden and say hey don't tell the boy tell him that he is to be taken to his village on some urgent work send somebody along with him see to it that he is dropped carefully there at his house even your parents will not bhagwan baba's love is the love of millions and millions of mothers but at the same time the message is my life is my message what are we learning from his message what are we learning from his life are we learning are we giving one day bhagwan baba when somebody gave something a precious check was given to bhagwan baba and we were sitting there he looked at it he tore it off and put it in the dustbin everybody was shocked swami it is such a huge amount of check you just drop it to them and so this fellow he wants to give me money you know what is this hand this hand just knows how to give it doesn't know to take that's a message this hand knows our hands how to take we don't know how to give we give i will always proudly declare to the world i gave something to my wife my son my daughter in law my daughter that's not called giving actually did you give something to somebody who is in no way related to you today in the super speciality hospital hundreds and hundreds of patients are getting treated every day from morning till evening you come to general hospital in puttaparthi and just wait there for an hour and see people from all around villages suffering from utter poverty go there they are treated free of cost not even a single paisa millions and millions and millions of rupees are spent on hospitals education in the university is given free of cost from class 1 to end and the water project which is an amazing project undertaken by bhagwan baba and in fact that project was undertaken pv narsimha rao garu former late prime minister of india was present in purnachandra hall and swami declared and looked at the prime minister and said probably it is good that a person from andhra pradesh became the prime minister today and you have this anantapur district which 
ಪಿ ವಿ ನರಸೂರ ಅವರು ಹಿಂಸೆ ಡಿಸ್ಕ್ರೈಬ್ ಆಸ್ ಅನಂತ ಪೂರ್ ಡಿಸ್ಟ್ರಿಕ್ಟ್ ಅನಂತ ಪೂರ್ ಇನ್ಫಿನಿಟ್ ಪಾವರ್ಟಿ ಟುಡೇ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಭಗವಾನ್ ಬಾಬಾ ಇನ್ಕಾರ್ನೇಟೆಡ್ ದೇರ್ ದ ಡಿಸ್ಟ್ರಿಕ್ಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಪ್ರಾಸ್ಪರಿಂಗ್ ವೇರ್ ಎವರ್ ಮಹಾಪುರುಷೋಸ್ ಲಿವ್ ದೇರ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಆಲ್ವೇಸ್ ಪ್ರಾಸ್ಪರಿಟಿ ಆಫ್ ಆಲ್ ಕೈಂಡ್ಸ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಟುಡೇ ಅನಂತಪುರ್ ಡಿಸ್ಟ್ರಿಕ್ಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಪ್ರಾಸ್ಪರಿಂಗ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಎನಿಥಿಂಗ್ ಪ್ರಾಬಬ್ಲಿ ನೋ ಅದರ್ ಡಿಸ್ಟ್ರಿಕ್ಟ್ ಇಸ್ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ಏಬಲ್ ಟು ಕಾಂಪೀಟ್ ವಿತ್ ಇಟ್ ಆಕ್ಚುಲಿ ವೆನ್ ಪಾಂಡವಾಸ್ ವಾರ್ ಇನ್ ಅಜ್ಞಾತ ವಾಸವ ಅಭಿಮನ್ ಯು ವಾಂಟೆಡ್ ಟು ಗೋ ಆನ್ ಸೀ ದಮ್ ಹಿ ಟೋಲ್ಡ್ ಈಸ್ ಮದರ್ ಅಮ್ಮ ಐ ವಾಂಟ್ ಟು ಸೀ ವೇರ್ ದೇ ಆರ್ ದೇ ಆರ್ ಇನ್ ಅಜ್ಞಾತ ದೇ ಆರ್ ಹಿ ವಾಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಸಪೋಸ್ ಟು ಗೋ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸೋ ಹಿಸ್ ಮದರ್ ಸೆಡ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ನಾಟ್ ಸಪೋಸ್ ಟು ಗೋ ಅಜ್ಞಾತವಾಸ ವೆರಿ ಡೇಂಜರಸ್ ಪೀರಿಯಡ್ ಸೊ ಯು ಆರ್ ನಾಟ್ ಸಪೋಸ್ ಟು ಗೋ ಯು ವಿಲ್ ನಾಟ್ ಗೋ ಯು ವಿಲ್ ನಾಟ್ ಸೀ ದಮ್ ಮೀನ್ ವೈಲ್ ಸಡನ್ಲಿ ಲಾರ್ಡ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಅಪಿಯರ್ಡ್ ದೇರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಲಾರ್ಡ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹಾಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಓನ್ ಡಿಸೈನ್ಸ್ ಹಿ ವಾಸ್ ದ ಮೇಕರ್ ಆಫ್ ಎವ್ರಿಥಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ದ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ಹಿ ವಾಸ್ ದ ಗಾಡ್ ಸೊ ಹಿ ಲುಕ್ ಡೆಟ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಸಿಸ್ಟರ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಸೆಟ್ ವಾಟ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ಪ್ರಾಬ್ಲಮ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದೆನ್ ಇಮಿಡಿಯೇಟ್ಲಿ ಹಿಸ್ ಸಿಸ್ಟರ್ ಸೆಟ್ ಹಿ ವಾಂಟ್ಸ್ ಟು ಗೋ ಅಂಡ್ ಸೀಸ್ ಲೆಟ್ ಇಮ್ ಗೋ ಹಿ ಇಸ್ ಎ ಕ್ಷತ್ರಿಯ ಹಿ ಇಸ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಬೆನ್ ಎಂಪರ್ ಆರ್ ಟುಮಾರೋ ಪ್ರಾಬಬ್ಲಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಹಿ ಶುಡ್ ನೋ ವಾಟ್ಸ್ ಹ್ಯಾಪನಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ದಿ ಎಂಟೈರ್ ಕಂಟ್ರಿ ವಾಟ್ ಕೈಂಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಪ್ರಾಬ್ಲಮ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ದೇರ್ ಹೌ ಪೀಪಲ್ ಆರ್ ಸಫರಿಂಗ್ ಹೌ ಟು ಅಡ್ಮಿನಿಸ್ಟರ್ ದಮ್ ಈ ಶುಡ್ ನೋ ಲೆಟ್ ಇಮ್ ಗೋ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಈ ಸೇಸ್ ಯಾ ಯು ಆರ್ ಅಲೌಡ್ ಗೋ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಅಭಿಮನ್ ಯು ಗೋಸ್ ಅಪ್ ಟು ದ ಡೋರ್ ಸ್ಟೆಪ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಕಮ್ಸ್ ಬ್ಯಾಕ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ರೆಸ್ ಎ ಸೆಟ್ ಡೌಟ್ ಟು ಹಿಸ್ ಅಂಕಲ್ ಸೊ ಅಂಕಲ್ ಐ ವಾಂಟ್ ಟು ನೋ ಸಮಥಿಂಗ್ ವಾಟ್ ಸೆಟ್ ಕೆನ್ ಯು ಗಿವ್ ಮಿ ಎ ಟಿಪ್ ಹೌ ಇಟ್ ವುಡ್ ಬಿ ಪಾಸಿಬಲ್ ಫಾರ್ ಮೀ ಟು ಐಡೆಂಟಿಫೈ ದಟ್ ಮೈ ರಿಲೇಷನ್ಸ್ ಮೈ ಪೇರೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಇನ್ ಎ ಪರ್ಟಿಕ್ಯುಲರ್ ಪ್ಲೇಸ್ ವುಡ್ ಇಟ್ ಬಿ ಪಾಸಿಬಲ್ ಫಾರ್ ಮೀ ಟು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಸಮ್ ಇನ್ಕ್ಲಿನೇಷನ್ ವೆನ್ ಐ ಎಂಟರ್ ಸಮ್ ಪ್ಲೇಸ್ ದಟ್ ಪ್ರಾಬಬ್ಲಿ ಮೇ ಬಿ ಇಟ್ ವುಡ್ ಬಿ ಪಾಸಿಬಲ್ ಫಾರ್ ಮೀ ಟು ಫೈಂಡ್ ದಮ್ ದೇರ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಲಾರ್ಡ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಗಿವ್ಸ್ ಎ ವಂಡರ್ಫುಲ್ ಆನ್ಸರ್ which i can relate to bhagwan satya sai baba lord krishna said when you enter a particular place where the wind is smooth it is gentle all the plants are green with flowers and fruits all the animals are enjoying bliss all the people are enjoying extraordinary property prosperity and the whole land mother earth is in blissful state when you put your foot on that soil recognize your parents are there if really a place is full of prosperity there are good souls all around there it is an indication given by krishna and you know anantapur district today the spiritual vibrations of various kinds of penance undertaken by his devotees swami the way he put his devotees on various spiritual programs it definitely is reflected in the kind of nature that has become abundant there today lord krishna when he was in brindavan it was like that it is described in bhagavatam it is pious ideas good ideas good thinking noble thinking at home everywhere with friends that makes you a pious being otherwise uh, there is a great difference between dharma raja and duryodhana your thinking makes you either duryodhana or your thinking makes you a dharma raja it is for you judgment is not given by swami it is for you do you want to be a dharma raja or do you want to be a duryodhana the principle that is offered by bhagwan baba by quoting from vedas is mana eva manushyanam karanam bandha mokshayo very simple mana eva manushyanam karanam bandha moksha it is your own mind which is either going to push you down into bondage or it is going to put you on the track of liberation what kind of mind you have my mind i want to share everything with everybody i want to give one day swami was talking to us and we said something swami it's a matter of culture and immediately swami shot a question back to us four five teachers were there what do you mean by culture bangaru he asked and it is better for us to maintain silence because you know 
it is very difficult to satisfy god and god must be having his own reasons to ask a question and he will give you when he answers brahma jnana not the meaning of kaicha brahma jnana when swami speaks every word is brahma jnana so you should allow the master to speak you should not speak sitting in the presence of master so we prayed and said swami enlighten us please bikshan dehi what is biksha biksha is a jnana it's very unfortunate we lost our track i am i feel very 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 sad i tell you we don't think of good things at all it is very unfortunate we don't think of jnana we don't think of charity we don't think of gentleness goodness culture how to speak how to stand how to dress swami was very particular when one person did not have a haircut in the veranda one day swami said tangaro why no haircut he didn't answer and swami went inside his interview room brought 10 rupees gave to that boy and said go bangaro have nice haircut take bath and come okay go he said that is all in the spiritual sense in the physical sense it is slapping a fellow understand culture what kind of dress you have to wear how you sit in the presence of swami and what kind of dresses we are wearing what kind of food we are eating what kind of water we are drinking are you are walking on the road and drinking coffee you are walking everywhere and go and eat wherever no time at all for that morning you eat afternoon you eat in the afternoon. every time go on eating and eating and eating hey, this body what do you mean of this body what do you think this is this is dasharatha this is called dasharatha everybody is dasharatha five jnanendriyas five karmendriyas put together dashendriyas are there in this body dashendriyas will be reflecting always the body reflects all these things spiritual powers your body is a spiritual power house and you use this body and take this body with wherever you want do whatever you want with this body god will be ready and we don't know what he will give us mundu nagara musalla pandaga wait for the consequences bangaru when you become old you will know what it is you will be paid back for all this whatever you are doing how to use your jnanendriyas you don't know you say you are fasting swami said i don't want not fasting not eating from morning until evening and in the evening you cook all over is interesting to you and thrash left and right and go to bed that is not called fasting bangaru what is fasting swami fasting means controlling your eye and not allowing your eye not to see things which are not to be seen that is fasting make your eye see what is to be seen see the grandeur of god goddess temples pure souls see this eye is given to you for that purpose listen to sacred things in the world don't trash everything bhagwan baba himself said why i have so much of hair you know whenever people talk to me all trash will be funnel thrown out only good will go inside his head i was talking to you about teja durjana sangatyam teja people come and talk bad to you your father in law is like this your brother is like this your father is like this why are you worried why are you worried you come to me and talk about my wife or my mother in law or my father in law or somebody else who are, why don't you keep quiet and why do you listen when somebody comes and talks rubbish about other people it is so sweet to hear ears bhagwan baba himself said it will be like music bangaru when you are hearing but when you are facing the consequences you will know what it will be kya jo durjana sangatyam leave bad company the translator said swami said wait wait no 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 not leave bad company or run away from bad company he said not leaving jao talk to him again he is coming to poison your mind and bhagwan baba talk to all of us and taught us one wonderful principle in life that 
we will never 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 complain about everybody anybody never never complain complaining is the trait of an evil mind don't complain try to be cultured what is culture that's what swami told us on that day the meaning is culture means bangaro concern for others supreme divine spiritual concern for others is called culture that is the property of this country we are the most cultured we are the most civilized people in the entire world because we are blessed with the best knowledge called vedas upanishads ramayana bharata bhagavata everything let us not ruin ourselves we need to get all this bhagwan baba appeared on the planet to remind us of this sacred truth why why we are all meeting we have bhajans we sit here light a lamp sit in front of bhagwan baba and then remind ourselves about all the lessons taught to us because we want to better ourselves let us stick to that and let us walk on that track with the best determination possible manaye eva manushyanam karanam bandha mokshayo he said this mind maybe some people will be going early morning for walk a lot of people go for early morning walking or in the evening maybe when early morning you have to go for a walk when you get up your mind tells you are if one day if i bunk what will happen let me not go today it happens with everybody today i have to go to mandir today there will be a program are today if you don't go what will happen let me go to picture your mind tries to drag you away from the right thing and put you down manaha this manaha is a very dangerous thing actually and to control this mind only yoga is given we talk about yoga yoga physical uh, practices and all that we do so that the body is in track body is intact and also mind is brought under control that is the purpose of yoga physical and mental both ways yoga ha chitta vritti nirodhaka ha why yoga the yoga is supposed to chitta vritti nirodhaka ha the vritti of chitta the mind's business the mind's business is to drag you down control that nirodhaka ha stop that let your mind not drag you down when your mind says today you bunk for walking you tell your mind shut up get up wear your walking dress you are on the road you are walking that's a go your mind says let me go to picture no i am not taking you to picture you eat something which is not good for you no i am not giving it to you by your blood pressure you are not supposed to eat it no 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 i like it i will kill your liking i will not give it to you you should tell your mind i will not give this let us see what will happen a few days you don't give it mind will not rebel it shuts its mouth and keeps quiet swami said that you have to control your mind and tell your mind stop it i will not listen to you you should listen to me Swami put it in one sentence he said master the mind be a master mind don't follow the mind if you follow the mind you will be ruined because mind will ask you double bedroom flat is okay today tomorrow three bedrooms today scooter is okay tomorrow motor bike day after tomorrow a car next day a high end car today 10 lakhs worth jewelry then uh, now why not 20 lakhs worth jewelry no end what is the cause of the ruin of human beings in this world bhagwan buddha said swami quoted any number of times swami quoted and converted into a wonderful principle the root cause of your downfall is desire desire that's all go on satisfying your desires the desires will get multiplied and multiplied and shankaracharya said trying to satisfy desires is like trying to put out fire 
by pouring ghee into it you go on pouring ghee try to put off fire try to satisfy desires more and more desires more and more desires more and more <coughs> why don't you put an end in prashant nilayam all of you who are aware about the life i think bhagwan baba gives accommodation to all the devotees chosen by him one room one kitchen toilet bathroom that is the accommodation given in puttaparthi ashram that is the only accommodation at the most if you are uh, a very significant person and you need because maybe you have your father old father or mother or somebody maybe you get one room extra but 99.9% people live in only one room one toilet one kitchen one bathroom believe me or not they are all multi billionaires everybody is a multi millionaire let me cite one or two examples the first registrar of sri satya sai institute of higher learning chakravarti garu he was a top class ias officer one of the top 10 of his batch he was about to be the chief secretary of andhra pradesh government when bhagwan baba said chakravarti i want you as the registrar of my university resign and come yes swami next minute resigned next minute he was about to the chief secretary of andhra pradesh just resigned and came away still continues to be in ashram can you do that there is another very great soul uh former chief vigilance commissioner of india who is that shri sv giri chief vigilance commissioner of india's rank is equivalent to the rank of cabinet minister cabinet minister government of india he was also a top class ias officer bhagwan baba wanted him as the vice chancellor of our university and he called him he said told the secretary call him and tell him i want him as my vice chancellor here and he told swami i need permission from the prime minister prime minister uh, is the one who should say yes and relieve me i am ready to come away and prime minister was vajpay shri vajpay garu recently who left his body a very great yogi and a very great devotee of bhagwan baba when the message was sent to vajpay garu he said you are relieved next minute shri yashvi giri chief vigilance commissioner of india continues to stay in ashram one room one kitchen one toilet bathroom friends sometimes i wonder when i ponder over all these things of great 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 souls who accomplished millions of things in this world they live in single room they lead a simple life why is it that we run for ostentatious life why india never india never wanted its people to live like that india wanted people to be simple we saw greatness in sanyasa we have never seen greatness in materialistic things in this world india is known for brahmajnana not ordinary jnana sitting here by meditating we were able to see the entire cosmos talk of a vasishta talk of a vishwamitra talk of jamadagni mahamuni sages saints seers this country is known because of them not because of anything else the glory of this country belongs to shankaracharya shirdi baba satya sai baba ramana maharshi ramakrishna paramahamsa where are we what are we doing are we taking the message of bhagwan baba seriously if we are taking his message seriously let us carry prashant nilayam in our hearts every minute every second prashant nilayam prashant nilayam prashant nilayam bhagwan baba bhagwan baba carry him in your hearts and minds 24 hours remind yourselves of his message how did he live bhagwan baba one day was asking as a question a small question he asked bangaro did you ever see me 
walking, putting my head towards the sky. Did you ever see me? Putting my, uh, put your head like this towards the sky and walk. I always walk putting my head down. You know the message? I want you also to put your head down and walk. Be simple, Bangaru. Don't think that you are anything special. Why? Even if you are said special, you don't exist. You may be an accomplished great person. Tomorrow is the day when you have to make it. Keep that point in mind. You will have to go. And nobody will remember you. No one will remember you once you are gone. Even wife and children will remember you for a month. Maybe they will think of you yearly once. When some ceremony is to be performed. That's all. And no one will remember you. You will be kicking yourself thinking that you are something special. That's called ego. That's called Ajnana, the darkness that's there within your mind. You may be an accomplished singer, a fistful of ash. You may be a Padma Bhushana, Padma Vibhushana, a fistful of ash. Maybe whatever you are, there it is, it's waiting. So Bhagavan Baba wanted us all to think that. So that you know your reality and conduct yourself perfectly. So that you begin to conduct yourself as a good human being. One day somebody asked Swami, Swami you started a university, so many students are, you are going to produce. Do you think that all your students are going to save this world? They are all going to become Vivekanandas. Or they will be like Ramakrishna Paramahamsa giving Brahma Jnana to the world and all that. What are you thinking actually? What is your idea of starting this university in a private conversation? And Bhagavan Baba said, no, no, Bangaru, I don't have such thoughts. Then what, Swami? And Swami said, if this university, from today onwards, as I establish it in future, at any point of time produces one Vivekananda and contributes to the world, I will be extremely happy, he said. I will be very happy. We have produced many. That's a different story. Many, many, many. Who would love? I would love people to go to Prashant Nilayam and see Prashant Nilayam, Whitefield, Anantapur, our primary school, our higher secondary school, Central Trust office, so many other offices. Please, when you get a chance, go to Puttaparthi and see our university students, not only there outside also, maybe in very different places, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of students, they gave up their personal lives. They don't have personal life at all. They prayed to Bhagavan Baba to give them a job or an opportunity to serve Him. Please, Swami, they fell at His feet and said, Swami, we beg you, give us some place here. We want to spend our lives in this ashram, all our lives. Your parents are calling you, we don't want to go, Swami. Your sister's marriage, I don't want to go, Swami. Why? I want only you, Swami. Ask my parents to come here, Swami, please. So that they will see me, they will have your darshan also, please. When I get married, no, Swami. Why? Maybe my commitment to you may get actually... Uh, or diverted, attention may get diverted. I don't want, I don't want any, par no personal ambitions at all, Swami, only one ambition. Hundreds and hundreds of students are there in Puttaparthi today and outside who are so inspired, they don't have their personal life. They, three people, four people live in one room and every day morning, in time, they are in the office from morning till evening working. Never take leave. No leave at all. Leave business doesn't apply to them. Why? Swami told on a number of occasions, did you ever see me taking leave? You are all fortunate you have holidays. I don't have a holiday, Swami said. I have to come and give. I think a kind of thought has to possess us. We must be possessed by a different kind of thinking. We have to change the entire process of thinking. We are on the wrong track. Let us change the process of thinking that let me live for the society. Let me live for others. 
people come and ask me to do something let me do it first some beggar used to stand at the gate and say bhavati bikshon dehi and the mother immediately washes her hands even she was eating she runs to give him the alms why i don't want that beggar to wait one thing to go without taking some food from my hands because it is an opportunity to me being blessed given by a beggar to me if you are able to give something to a beggar consider that is a great opportunity given to you what do you say get lost you did not say to him you told it to yourself get lost there is a different way of thinking at things looking at things let it change one day bhagwan baba was having temperature sitting inside the room and some vips were there and they prayed to him swami you are running 102 103 temperature it is extremely hot outside devotees are all waiting but don't go swami you need not give darshan nobody is going to complain nobody is going to say why bhagwan baba is not coming out you are not answerable to anybody so don't go and give darshan swami gave a smile and maintained silence i told you silence somebody else went and said swami silence after half an hour somebody else went 3 o'clock 3:30 4 o'clock it's getting hotter and hotter outside the sand is boiling devotees are all waiting and these people are saying don't go after three four people recommended to bhagwan baba swami looked at the last person who recommended the same and said bangaru nenu darshanam ivvadaniki vedutunnanu nenu evaru chepparu who told you that i am going to give darshan oh thank you swami you are not going we are very happy and bhagwan baba immediately said bangaru i am not going to give darshan i am going to take darshan what do you mean by swami what do you mean by that swami bangaru do you think that i go to give darshan any day i go to have my devotees darshan because my devotees are my gods what is the kind of thinking it is there i have to go and see them because they are waiting sitting on the boiling sand for hours and hours and hours do you want me to disappoint them i have to go i have no choice i have to go and see them and i have to they have to see me this is mutual when we are giving something to anybody else bhagwan baba said you are in fact giving it to yourself you are not giving it to somebody else you are giving it to yourself when you are singing bhajans and trying to please bhagwan baba you are pleasing yourself anything that you are doing in this world better you remember that you are doing it for yourself it has gone to such an extent when devotees went some people are well and told swami swami we are doing your seva and immediately swami said i don't want your seva what is this swami you don't want our seva no i don't want your seva bangar why swami hey what are you talking you are serving me by serving me you are serving yourself whatever service you are doing you are getting the fruits of that you are going to be rewarded for that when you do service i am not going to be rewarded it is for you why i am putting all of you in sevadal why i am asking you to serve 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 because i want you to sanctify your lives i am trying to drive you on the path of sanctifying your own lives because it is said in shastras paropakarardham idam shariram this body is given to you if i may say so to be destroyed in the service of the society you should get completely you are a doctor and from the hospital you get a call in the midnight at 1 o'clock when you are in deep sleep you cannot say i am sleeping you are harming yourself there is somebody in pain it is your responsibility to go and attend to that yes i just now told somebody standing at your gate and asking for food that's an opportunity in bhartiya culture when we talk about upanayanam we perform upanayanam sacred thread we offer to a kid 
the first thing we teach him on that day immediately after giving him the cross belt is go to everybody bhavate bhikshon dehi i am begging please give me food why why do we want people to be put on this culture because i want to kill your ego tonsure your head completely put a pelaka small pelaka make him wear a small cloth piece of cloth i don't know how many of you are ever until and unless the fellow completed his complete education total education and got into grahastha ashrama he was not even allowed to look into a mirror that's a rule you can't look into a mirror at that is the culture you will sleep on the on the floor in prashant nilayam all most of the people sleep on the floor it's not that they cannot buy cots multi millionaires are each fellow own 1000 acres 500 acres of land crorepati is all of them i spend 2 and 1/2 lakhs on my cot today i don't understand what it is you could have served a hundred souls with that money you could have done great charity do you think that you are uh, presenting yourself as something special to this world what is so special what is it going to happen after some time people actually died in this country with the commitment for truth for dharma for prema for satya ahimsa people died satya harishchandra an emperor became actually a watchman at a burial ground just to protect truth dharma for the sake of dharma dharma raja left his own empire what are we learning shri ramachandra prabhu all life all problems all difficulties the greatness was we invite problems give me more problems why i will closer to god kunti asked krishna lord krishna after uh, dharma raja was coronated she said he said lord said i am going and kunti came and said why are you going away that now your son got empire he is an emperor now you got all kinds of prosperity okay enjoy life i am going and then kunti being the most brilliant woman spiritual woman she went and said swami if you are going to be in our company only when we have problems i pray to you to give us more and more and more problems give us more problems swami so that we keep on thinking of you 24 hours the culture is completely different after the war got over and dharma raja was coronated every day dharma raja every day morning he was going to dhritarashtra's palace dhritarashtra who conspired to kill pandavas all his life dharma raja every day morning first thing he was doing was he was going to his padanana padanana's house palace he would go there he removes his crown puts it down puts his forehead on the feet of dhritarashtra does namaskar to dhritarashtra and gandhari please bless me padanana please bless me what a kind of culture what heights it's a, it's at what heights what a kind of culture is uh, given to the world by india what did we preach shankaracharya all his life he walked on foot himalayas to cape comoran vivekananda never touched money ramakrishna paramahamsa ramana maharshi mauna maharshi don't we feel that probably we don't deserve this kind of heritage today because of your behavior satya sai baba how did he live all his life giving and giving and giving and giving the water project was undertaken and done by bhagwan baba on his own refusing to take any money from government of india he wanted to give water to all the poor people in anantapur district the entire district where there was not glass of water available borrowed money left and right from various banks mortgaged his own properties 
and he made a declaration in sai kulon thar if this project were to be completed and if there is money required and i don't have money i don't mind selling away prashant nilayam standing on the streets for this project he said when the project was completed all the villagers panchayat board members of 1500 people came from all villages everywhere anantapur district came in prashant nilayam sat there to express their gratitude to bhagwan i was sitting at a distance when the swami came swami stood in front of them and they all got up when swami asked bangaru why are you all here enduku bangaru meer andar ikkada vacharu swami we are all here to express our gratitude to you because for the past 5 to 600 years we never saw water here there no water at all never any government tried to give water to us today so much of water is available to all of us so we are here to express our gratitude to you i was shocked when bhagwan baba said something and i remember that conversation perfectly it got recorded in my mind swami looked at them and said enta tappu bangaru what a blender it is bangaru to express your gratitude to me why swami you did something we are expressing gratitude and then swami said no 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 bangaru నాకు దాహం వేసింది నేను మంచి నీళ్ళు తెప్పించుకున్నాను నేను మంచి నీళ్ళు తాగాను నా దాహం తీర్చుకున్నాను నాకు నేను థ్యాంక్స్ చెప్పుకుంటానా ఐ ఆమ్ థర్స్ ఐ గాట్ వాటర్ ఐఆమ్ డ్రింకింగ్ వాటర్ ఐఎమ్ క్వెంచింగ్ మై ఓన్ థర్స్ డూ ఐ థ్యాంక్ మై సెల్ఫ్ బంగారు యు ఆర్ ఆల్ మై ఓన్ రిఫ్లెక్షన్స్ వెన్ యూ ఫీల్ థర్స్ ఐ ఫీల్ థర్స్ వెన్ యూ క్వెంచ్ యువర్ థర్స్ ఐ క్వెంచ్ మై థర్స్ ఐ ఫీల్ వెరీ హ్యాపీ ఇట్స్ నాట్ యూ టు ఎక్స్ప్రెస్ గ్రాటిట్యూడ్ టు మై బంగారు లెట్ మీ టెల్ యూ టుడే i have to express gratitude to all of you for blessing me with this wonderful opportunity to serve you what a kind of thinking god noble god himself said these words not only that he did not stop there immediately he said bangaru not only that i am begging you today to bless me with many many more opportunities like this to serve you and to sanctify this avatar these are his own words what are we learning where are we i think there is a long way to progress contemplation 24 hours we have to think jesus did the same thing when he was going to be crucified he was people pelted stones at him they kicked him he was lashed a thorny crown was put on his head he was bleeding there was sweat thirsty he was not allowed to be given a glass of water dragged and dragged a big cross on his shoulders which was very heavy up to a point he went on and on and on people spat on his face and he wiped he looked at and said do you feel like spitting once again bangaru can do that be happy by doing it there a point came from where people who are not allowed on both sides he was to be taken onto the hill top to be crucified and there actually he put the cross down he knelt down put both his hands towards the sky at that point of time he looked at the sky and said oh my father forgive them they know not what they were doing please pardon them when they were pelting stones when they were lashing him when he was bleeding all this was happening this is the trite of great souls mahatma gandhi mother teresa nelson mandela so many people in the present day in a different way our former president abdul kalam abdul kalam our president what kind of life it was ah uh, at least something if not a sage at least in a different way what are we doing accumulating 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 24 hours becoming more and more and more possessive in this consumerist world materialistic world but that's not the purpose of uh, the avatar avatar's purpose is different so i think i don't know how long i spoke i have taken a lot of your time i think today saram sir so it is very very important for all of us to understand the message in its real spirit that message is more important his love is more important and never think he is gone 
millions of times he said don't get attached to my body swami declared this don't hang on to my body in purnachandra auditorium specially he addressed staff and students and said don't hanker after this body bhagwan baba is not this 5 feet 2 inches physical frame i am universal and you know he was appearing in various countries at the same time you talk you don't believe how is that why is that who is say bhagwan baba appeared he cured somebody's problem somewhere in africa he appeared in england he saved some devotee and all that you read uh, but we don't if we firmly believe he is with us every minute all your life he is with you guiding you just close your eyes and you can see him you can feel him always get connected to him mana eva manushyanam karanam bandha mokshayo i said already keep this mind at the lotus feet of bhagwan baba all the time you are connected he is with you wherever you go he is always there and even today millions of miracles are happening all over the world how do you justify that that's why most important knowing understanding and realizing or three aspects you know sometimes you don't understand it you understand it you don't realize it this is a process you should know it you should understand it you should realize it somebody will tell you if you touch fire it will burn you you know somebody said it you want to understand it see somebody oh that fellow danced when he touched fire oh 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 that's understanding realization is you yourself touch fire then you will experience it so knowing and understanding you stop here realize what all he did what is it that he did not do bhagwan baba in bombay here this fantastic dharma kshetra is built by bhagwan baba who declared himself to be avatar by throwing away his books as a school kid puttaparthi village was very close to indus valley civilization at that time at that point of time he declared and he did it you are sitting here we are all talking about him we experienced him he came here a number of times and how millions and millions of people thronged see all that in your mind there was no place for swami to give darshan in puttaparthi once he had to give darshan by helicopter actually how people went to puttaparthi so many people it's very important that that we remain connected remain connected remain connected connected 24 hours this is prashant nilayam here you have bhagwan baba with you in you he himself said i am in you i am above you i am behind you i am in front of you i am back of you i am all around you i am in you you and me are no different don't say please don't say please don't don't talk don't talk realize realize keep it in your mind he is with you with everybody have this confidence in your mind swami hundreds of times said vishwasam pradhanam vishwasam that faith that faith is very 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 important once we have that faith he is always always with us and he will guide us and by simple life i tell you you are always in a state of bliss let us follow his message he was very simple all his life he was very simple serving others let us look for our happiness in the service to others let us look for our bliss by actually sharing everything with others in the society around let us be more and more concerned about the welfare of the entire society let us not think of your happiness swami said the whole society when you pray loka samasta sukhino bhavantu see all the worlds in your mind don't say that simply loka samasta sukhino bhavantu my mind get expanded and see all the worlds in my mind 
Sarve jana sukhino bhavantu. Let all the beings be happy. Let it be true prayer. After the prayer, don't say that, my God, his son got a seat, my son did not get a seat. Don't say that. No. Remove all this. Be truthful. Sarve jana sukhino bhavantu. Samastha sanmangalani bhavantu. Let auspiciousness be there everywhere. What for Bhagavan Baba spent all his life? That's what he wanted to grant to each and every soul around everywhere. And we are fortunate. We were able to really see him, touch him, feel him, receive the message directly from him. Let us be more and more deserving of his grace even today. Thank you very, very much for this wonderful opportunity you have granted me. In the process of sharing my thoughts at any point of time, if I am caught, or at any point of time I caused any, 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 any pain to anybody, I request you to kindly pardon me for that. I express my deep sense of gratitude to Bhagavan Baba for giving me this unique opportunity to be in this place today and sharing my thoughts with all of you. Also, I thank all my students who thought of me and who are here, who continue to love me and all of you for tolerating me for such a very long time. Thank you very, very much. Jai Sairam.